Hi everyone and welcome to the latest edition of the Academy Show. I'm your host Mo Stewart and joining me as ever is our Academy expert, the man who's out there, rain or shine, and in the last month there's been a fair bit of rain watching those boys take on the world, Matt Addison. Matt, there's been a lot of great football over time, even if maybe it's not always in the best conditions. Yeah, there, there certainly has. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to get into it shortly, aren't we? But it's been uh, it's been an exciting period, really. There's not been loads to talk about with the 23s, but certainly with the 18s slash 19s, plenty to, to get into and plenty of, of positivity as well, which is always, always good, isn't it? Yeah, we like the positivity. And considering how rosy things seem in the garden for the seniors at the moment, it's really nice to see that the kids are also taking up some of that momentum, which brings me nicely onto the UEFA Youth League. The under-18s had their own little penalty shootout success in the round of 16 game against the Belgians' Genk. Now, it's a fantastic achievement to achieve to reach the last day. I know we often talk about the fact that trophies and titles isn't the end goal for these boys, but I'm not sure we've been in this. I mean, the competition is only eight years old, so I'm not even sure we've been this far before. And we're going to be playing a massive team like Juventus. So whatever, however you look at it, this is a big, big, big achievement for these boys, isn't it? Yeah, they, they have got to, to this round before. They were knocked out in 2018 to Manchester City in the, the quarterfinals. So if they can go one better, that would, would certainly you know be be a good thing for them. And I think it is it's about their experience. It's something we we spoke to the manager Mark Ridge Wilkinson about. It's something we've spoken to, to Barry Lutus about in the past as well. Of a kind of just a, a different kind of competition. You're playing against different teams. You're mm. playing with a slightly different referee. I noticed that the referees are back now to being brought in from abroad again, as it would be for the Champions League. They switched that up a, a little bit during COVID, but it looks like that's now back as well. So even little details like that, I think, is is really important. So, yeah, they've they've got to this point before. Obviously, not these players. It was, I think, Curtis Jones and Nico yes. Williams, Reese Williams, that kind of age group that, that got to... Uh, to the to the quarters before, but then were knocked out on penalties. So, hopefully, Liverpool can uh, can go one better this time. I don't think they've been to to the semi finals before, obviously. So, if they can beat Juventus in the next round, that would be kind of new territory for them. But yeah, will be a will be a difficult one, and it's away from home as well next week. So, a uh, little yeah. bit of a, I suppose, again going back to to the kind of the referee and the the kind of all the the kind of process around it, mm-hmm. traveling away from home, playing a big team like Juventus. I think that will uh, no matter the result even though we want Liverpool to win no matter the result there will be uh, will be plenty of, of learnings to take from that I think oh of course and like you say it's just the atmosphere around those big European nights and some of those fellas you mentioned from 2018 Nico Williams and Curtis Jones obviously they've now gone on to experience it in the senior team and you can see how that kind of bedding in period of having to experience it even at a lower level is going to help them but I want to talk more about this game in particular because It was the same time as the Liverpool um, seniors were playing Norwich in the FA Cup, which meant that they were missing plenty of people who would have played in this game, the likes of Conor Bradley and Tyler Morton, who were in that squad. But Owen Beck and Kai Gordon didn't play in this game either. So when you think about the the, the, how big a chunk of the best players that is for this side, it's an even better achievement, isn't it? Yeah, without a doubt. Owen Beck and, and Cade Gordon, I believe, are, are injured at the moment. I don't think it's anything too major, but it was enough to, to keep them out. And then obviously Tyler and, and Connor were both in the, the squad for, for later on. So, yeah, it was um, another example of something that we've said plenty of times on this show of Liverpool are going to prioritise the senior team. And it was better for Tyler Morton to be involved with them than it was to mm-hmm. obviously play in this game. But yeah, it, it does underline that achievement, doesn't it? The fact that Pretty well, yeah. Four four of those players, if they were, um, if the circumstances were different, they would have been in that team. They would have been in the, the starting eleven. So if you take out, you know, four outfield players, that's a, a significant chunk. So, yeah, I mean, Genk as well, a, a very good side. They beat Chelsea five one in the previous round. They've got a couple of good players that you know you, you could tell just from watching them really that they're a mm. they're a proper a team that they. they they went probably slightly more direct than you might expect for, for a European team. They didn't particularly mess about with playing the ball out from the back. It was, you know, maybe one or two little passes and then a hoof up field. But it was uh, it, it was a team that knew what they were doing. They had a couple of, of big physical players and they were, you know, a bit of a handful for Liverpool. But yeah, again, a, 
another sort of big test that, that these young players have, have managed to pass. Now, I was following the game pretty much by your tweets because I was out and about at the time. And it, it appeared to be a game where Liverpool had the better of the first half, got the goal just before half time, And then the, the half-time break seemed to do the Belgians well and they were able to create a few more chances. But although they equalised early on, they weren't Liverpool was still able to hold them off and to get to the penalty shootout. And then I kind of joke about the idea of it being copying the, the seniors. But again, a penalty shootout in itself is a really good test for any young player because it tests not only your temperament, it tests your technique as well. And for, I mean, I, I believe one of there was one of them who missed out of the five, but I think four out of five is still a fantastic ratio in that scenario. Yeah, it's it, it's a pressure situation, isn't it? I mean, it, it's not the Champions League. Clearly, it's it's only a, a youth competition, but it's still going to mean a great deal to these players. It's still certainly live on LFC TV. Might have been on BT Sport as well. I'm not too sure, but you know, it, it's certainly you know on TV. Lots of people can watch it. There's there's a big audience, even if there's not necessarily a huge crowd actually in attendance. So, it, it's a pressure situation. It's something that they've got to to get used to and. You know, it's it's something like you say. We've seen the senior team do really well. We've seen the the neuroscience team work with the the first team. Again, mm. speaking to to their manager at the end of it, they've been working with the the youth teams as well. So they played a, a bit of a bit of a role in in this win as well. I'm not entirely sure what what that kind of entails. To be perfectly honest to you, we we did ask uh, Harvey Davis, the goalkeeper, at, at full time. You know, what exactly is it that the neuroscience team do with you? And he, he was a little bit coy in, in terms of of the specifics of it. But you know, it's it's something again that Liverpool at first team level have, have got the benefit of it. The fact mm -hmm. that they can sort of pass that down to to these younger players as well. Obviously, you know, the the ones who are with the senior team more frequently are going to have the the more benefit. Of that, but you know, for for all of them involved, I think it was, uh, you know, a little bit of a of an edge, really, and mm -hmm. just the the fact that there is these sort of, um, you know, different elements of it coming in. I think it's a, a psychological thing as much as anything else. If you've got people in the backgrounds working out the the calculations behind who should take which penalty, what order should it be, yes. who should be taking it, how should we save them? I mean, just the fact that you've got that sort of level of of research going into it, I think, is is a big psychological advantage as well. So, yeah, not just the first team that are, uh, are benefiting from that, but the youth team's very much a, a part of that as well. And it might actually really come in handy as a, as a competition progresses because I believe four of the last 16 ties were decided by penalties. And if you look at some of the teams still involved, obviously we've got Juventus, but there's other teams who've got strong pedigree for youth size. I think of uh, PSG, uh, Benfica, RB Salzburg, uh, Borussia Dortmund are all still involved. Atletico Madrid are in there as well. So there's still some big teams knocking around. But obviously, like we say, if we can get past a team the size of Juventus, then the sky's the limit, really. Yeah, Juventus were, were one of those teams that won on penalties as well. I think I can't remember off the top of my head who it was they beat, but yeah, it's uh, it, it, there's a good few names there that you've listed off that you'd think would be a, a fairly big challenge for, for Liverpool. I believe the the way the competition works is that if Liverpool were to win in the quarters, they do a kind of within a week you'll play the semi final and the final. Mm -hmm. I can't remember where that is, but it's it's sort of all in one location, so it's slightly different in right. in that regard. But it would be you know a, a huge a huge learning experience for them to to go and and have that opportunity so yeah, yeah fingers crossed they can uh, can get the win and, and go on and, and do that now as you mentioned the uefa youth league stuff has been shown on lfc lfc tv and on bt sport the game is being played next tuesday at three o'clock so if you are interested and want to cheer our boys on that's the time and place to check it out now Obviously, last time we were on here talking about the under-18s, we were talking about that disappointing FA Cup Youth Cup loss to Chelsea. But since then, including this game against Gink, the boys have been flying. It's around five consecutive wins, including completing the Derby double. And they've got Manchester United this weekend. So it seems like the perfect time for those lads to come into town, don't you think? Yeah, it's it's been a good run, hasn't it? It's um, it's a talented group of players, isn't it? We've we've spoken plenty of times about that. It's it's no surprise that they are sort of doing what they're doing. I think that the Chelsea game was was a bit of a shock, and I think it's it's probably made the UEFA Youth League even more important. To be honest, the fact that they're not in the FA Youth Cup and they don't get to experience going far in that competition, I think, just makes the other competition that 
Liverpool are involved in. Obviously, the, the league is there as well. But I think the, the two cup competitions where you've got that little bit of, of extra pressure, you've got probably a lot more people watching and, and keeping an eye out. I'm sure you know more people are, are interested and intrigued by the, the UEFA Youth League than they are you know, at just a, a normal under-18s Premier League North game. I think there's there's a lot more interest there. There's a bit more pressure on, on those players as well. And it's it, you know it's it, it's a huge opportunity to learn, which I think is is priority number one. But it's also an opportunity to go and show that you can win penalty shootouts. You can go on and, and get into to these pressure moments because I think the more of those that you get, even at youth level, I think that you know if these players are going to go on and play for Liverpool, they're going to have to come up with these pressure moments at, at some point. And you know it's it, it's impossible to say how much. For example, Harvey Elliott, how much did he benefit from playing in the UEFA Youth League to then going into Liverpool's first team? But it can't be a bad thing, can it? It can only be a, a positive. And I think if you've got you know, him stepping up, for example, in the Carabao Cup final, it, you know, if he if he's had that practice in, in previous seasons, whether that be for Blackburn, whether that be, you know, at, at youth level, wherever it is, I think the more you practice, the better you get. I think that's that's a fairly obvious thing to say, but I do think it's uh, it's it, it can be important. And uh, yeah, the, the more you win, the more it, it becomes a habit. Exactly. And I think not only that, but the way that they were able to shake off that result, because I mean, we spoke about it on the last show, it's hopefully something they're going to learn from the manner of how they were up and then they could pull it back. And since then, like I say, they've been in tough situations within the derby game, there's the times when Everton put them under pressure, but they were the, the extra quality was able to come through. And thinking ahead to this Manchester United game, um, over the course of this last period or so, I've been really impressed with Harvey Blair who got a couple of goals in that derby game, got a goal in the last game, the uh, win at Stoke as well. And he's someone who, again, it feels like we say this a lot, he's someone who was on the radar for a long time, signed his first professional contract just over a year ago, and then got another contract uh, this last well, October, which is obviously a sign of progress. But this year he seems to have really kicked on, adding goals to his game. Normally seems to be playing on the left of the front three, what might now be called the Luis Diaz position. But um, he looks like a guy who's got talents and he has a bit of an adaptability as well to be able to affect it in different areas of the pitch too. Yeah, I think it's it's that classic thing really in terms of what we always talk about with Liverpool attackers, whether it's him, whether it's Matthias Musilovsky, whether it's Bobby Clark, whoever it is, they can play in this variety of positions. I think you're right to say he's primarily playing off the left, but he can play as a 10, he can play through the middle play on the right he can play a little bit deeper and I think that's you know just it, it's so obvious now I think we, we've seen this pattern strengthen more and more and more the more you think about it the more names there are that can do this kind of thing where they play in in all of these different positions and again it's an exact replica of what you need if you're going to play for Liverpool at first team level and I think Harvey is is one of those that has kicked on I think you're right to, to say that he played 55 minutes didn't he for, for the senior team where probably not many people had even heard of him maybe at, at that no. time. Certainly hadn't seen much of him, um, but I thought did okay in that, obviously, considering the, the circumstances relatively to, to being thrown in in that kind of, of fixture. The fact that he was trusted, I think, says a, a lot about sort of what they think of him and, and how mature he is. Obviously, we know there was a couple of injuries. Kate Gordon was out yeah. again at, at that time as well. It would have been him, obviously, he would have played in that had he been fit, but... Yeah, I think you're right to say that he's kicked on a lot. I think it's a goal every seven, a goal or assist, sorry, every 79 minutes this season for him across mm. at least the league, possibly all competitions. So it's it's always a case, isn't it, of you look and you see with the eye test how good these players are and has he got the ability to, to dribble? Has he got the ability to, to beat a man and, and do all the things that you need to be able to do? Yes, but also he's got in those, the, those numbers as well, which... Obviously, they have to, to translate further forward. They have to go into the 23s and, and then into the senior team. But I think at, at this moment in time, for somebody who's playing out wide, to be getting that kind of, of sort of return in terms of the, the ability level that he's got, but also marrying that up with the, the stats as well, I think is it is a testament really to, to the quality that he's got. He spent a, a lot of time last season out injured. He's yeah. had a couple of, of little moments this season. I'm not quite sure whether it's been injuries this season or whether it's just been that they're kind of managing him a little bit. Still pretty young, still needs to kind of make himself physically into a position where he can play two, three times a, in, in a week. But 
when he's been on the pitch this season, as I say, a goal or assist every 79 minutes. And yeah, you, you can't really argue with numbers like that. No, and, and the crazy thing is, is that we've got a guy who's producing that kind of productivity, who's that adaptable, who's got that much trust from the management team. And yet there are so many like that that we haven't even spoken about yet until this point. So when we're thinking about the pathway and obviously there's the other Harvey who's getting more involved in the senior team, which means that others can move into the 23s, which means that others can move into the 18s. And you're going further and further down the chain. I'm seeing that breadth of talent at each level. It really is not only encouraging for us as Liverpool fans, but we need to give a shout out to these coaching staff here as well, because they are churning out such a high level of quality players. Yeah, I think the the fact that they're all on one site now, I think that will help. It's obviously impossible. We're not there day to day to see what they do in training, but I think it, it's fairly obvious that there's been you know a, another step forward really since that move to to Kirby for for the first mm-hmm. team. It's it's obvious now that you can see there's much more of of a merging between these teams. There's an opportunity for different coaches to go and and spend a bit of time with different teams. There's there's much more fluidity between those and. You know, we've we've said it plenty of times now. There's there is that literal pathway from one to the other, which you can can physically see, which I don't think can can ever be a bad thing either. So, yeah, he's he's not the only one. Harvey Blair, he, he's been impressing, but as I say, you've got Bobby Clark, you've got not come with Roundorf, you've got so many of these players. Not all of them are going to be able to make it at Liverpool because, quite simply, you don't need sort of ten or twelve of of these attacking players, but. <laughs> You know, you, you you'd like to think that at least one or two of them could could go on and, and make you know a significant impact. Cade Gordon, I think for me, is absolutely nailed on to do that. But I think there's there's one or two more in in that kind of area that you just think is, like you say, is productivity. The the, the fact that we've not spoken about him yet is is remarkable, really, because those sorts of of numbers are are really really impressive. And I think it's it's been a big step forward the last couple of weeks. It'll be interesting to see sort of what happens, not just for him, but for, for one or two others as well between now and, and the end of this season. I think it's it's a crucial period, really, in terms of making sure that it's them who's in contention to go on, on senior pre-season because, like we spoke about on the last show, there's one or two names that I think will be there. Uh, Stefan Bicetic is, is one. I think Bobby Clark will be another one. But someone like Harvey Blair, I think, not least because he's obviously played for the senior team this season as well, but I think he's one that he should have his eye on, on being there and, and being in and around the squad. And he's probably one of those that might be there for the first couple of weeks and then mm. gets let go after after that. But that would be, you know, that would be a, a big step forward really in terms of, of him. If he can be there on day one of preseason with the senior team, mm. I think that would be uh, certainly a reward for his progress. But I think it's it's one that's going to depend really on what happens over the next couple of months. See, I think that's a re- it's a really exciting sideshow of all of this for me is that whole preseason because it almost feels like the atmosphere, like an international tournament is coming up. So, for example, when England are playing in the World Cup and everyone's like, who's going to be on the plane? And everyone's trying to position themselves in the right place over the last few months of the season to get on there. This feels very similar but within the Liverpool context of trying to get into that preseason because, as you say, once you're in and around that squad, then things can accelerate really quickly. Um, so let's talk about the under-23s, because a lot of those guys are probably going to be closer to that particular preseason squad. Now, they have only played two games since we last spoke, uh, but a 1-1 draw against Blackburn was complemented with a resounding away victory against an Arsenal side that are currently sitting second in the Premier League 2 table. And obviously, we've discussed tables can lie occasionally, but... Over the course of a long period of time that we've had so far this season, I would say it's reliable to say that Arsenal are a good side and score four goals away from home, Matt, against a side like that. It's never to be sniffed at. Yeah, Arsenal are always a, a good team, actually. Whenever I've I've seen them at youth level, they tend to to do pretty well. So, yeah, to, to go and, and do that and put in that kind of performance, I think, will will be impressive. As we always say, it's it's probably important to remind people it's quite hard to, to predict the under-23s teams in terms of not just who is playing for Liverpool, but who isn't as well. Obviously, if you've got Tyler Morton in there, if you've got Leighton Clarkson in there, that's slightly different. It's it's the same with Arsenal as well. I know they've got a fairly youthful senior team now under Mikel Arteta, but there is still one or two opportunities for, for those players to, to step back down and, and go into the under-23s again. So, yeah, it was, a, was an impressive result. It's, again, 
far more, I think, about the details of what happens within those games, who's impressing, who's kind of stepping up and, and being in good form. Again, similar with one eye on pre-season as well. I think it's it, it's far more about the, the specifics with the under-23s rather than the, the actual results themselves. But, you know, four goals, a win, you, you can't really argue with that. No, I think that's fair. And whereas it may not necessarily be the results in terms of league position that, that matter, the performances against the best teams, these are things that you can kind of take as players, you can take confidence for going forward. And I think about the, future, the fixtures they've got coming up. They've got consecutive games against Spurs, against Manchester City and Chelsea. So from that perspective, going up against the best there is in this position, uh, Barry Lutis is going to learn a lot more about these guys, I think, over the next three games and how their attitude towards it and their performances uh, show up. Yeah, I think those those big games are the, are the ones that you take the most interest in. I think those are the ones that you learn the most from. I know Tottenham are pretty good at this level. Man City and Chelsea obviously goes without saying that, that both of those two teams are because of you know, the, the sort of money that they've been able to, to pump into to their youth team. So it, it's an opportunity, I think, to kind of gauge where Liverpool are up to, gauge kind of where these teams are. And obviously I mentioned it's it's not always the case that you know, Tyler Morton or Leighton Clarkson or whoever it might be will be in these games. But I think if if there is ever an argument for making them drop down for a week and, and go into one of these games, it's probably a Man City or a Chelsea rather than just a, a run-of-the-mill game. So be interesting to, to see sort of who is is involved with these games and, and who kind of, of ends up where. Um, it's mm-hmm. it's always one of those where, you know, we, we don't want to read too much into the results, but at the same time, if if you do go on and, and beat Manchester City and let's say Leighton Clark's impresses or Marcelo Pitaluga or whoever it might be, I think you, you can learn a little bit from that. You can kind of, infer from their performance relative to, to the team that they're playing a, a little bit more. So, yeah, it, it'd be interesting to, to see what happens. And, you know, Le- Leighton Clarkson is, is one, I think, to, to kind of keep an eye on in terms of, of what happens. It's it, it it's a tough one for him. Obviously, he didn't have the, the best start to the season, played in, in the Arsenal game, played fairly frequently for the under-23s recently. But, uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see sort of what happens between now and, and the end of the year for him mm-hmm. because... He was probably one that maybe 12 months or so ago we kind of thought was was on the verge of, of being stepping up into the, the first team and taking that next step. Hasn't hasn't quite happened for him. I don't, I don't think Blackburn was was the best place to go for him. Maybe didn't quite work out as, as expected there. But you know, there's still there's still a lot of talent in there. I just I wonder for him, possibly as Tyler Morton just gone a little bit past him and, and maybe maybe that pecking order has, has shifted certainly that would be you know evidence from from the last couple of weeks where Tyler's come on against Norwich where yeah. Leighton Clarkson has, has still been with the, the under 23 so big few months ahead for him I think it wouldn't massively shock me if he was to, to move on in the summer but mm-hmm. wherever he goes I think there's a, there's there's a much more talented player than what he showed in the first half of, of this season when he was out on loan mm-hmm. at, at the very least so yeah certainly uh, one to, to keep an eye out there and that's the strange thing sometimes with the young players is that the loans that they go on can so much affect their, their standing within the game uh, in terms of what people believe they can be at, what level people believe they can be at. So I hope that he's able to show his the best of himself so he can, if he is moving on, can find somewhere a, a decent level for him. But the interesting thing for me about all of this is that normally at this stage of the season, there are no more senior opportunities because it's the business end, as we call it, but we're still in the FA Cup. I mean, by the time this comes out, we will know who our next opponents will be in the quarterfinals. And it's a team from the championship, which makes you think that some of these young guys are going to be involved, particularly when you consider what other battles the senior side are going to be fighting in and around that time. And again, winning the fifth round, uh, sorry, winning the, the, the quarterfinals, sorry, and then Wembley is around the corner. And again, if Liverpool's senior side are in big battles, then there may well be more opportunities for maybe even a Wembley appearance for some of these boys. Yeah, I think there's there's probably one or two that you'd have your eye on in terms of, of the quarterfinal. I think it would be a similar team, basically, to the one that, that took on Norwich. I think there'll be you know fair a fair few changes, whoever it is that, that Liverpool get. Obviously, two decent championship teams that they could face. Whoever it is, I think, will be will be a bit of a test, but probably no more than a test of of Liverpool than what Norwich was. So, 
you'd expect they'd be able to, to make a few changes and probably Tyler Morton will be involved in some way, possibly Connor Bradley or possibly Owen Beck. If, if he's back, Kate Gordon, you'd fancy to be on the bench, but mm -hmm. it is difficult at the moment, isn't it? Because at the moment, at least, hopefully this stays the case, but there's not that many injuries. There's not that many concerns right. for, for Liverpool. So, yeah, be interesting to, to see what happens, but yeah, I'd, I'd imagine Tyler Morton will be there and for him, quarterfinals of the FA Cup, it's, it, it's not a bad gig, is it? No, and I mean, I still believe that if he goes in there and he makes a real difference in that game, then, and we get to Wembley, he might find himself on the bench. And again, even if he doesn't necessarily get on, it's just another one of those big experiences logged at a very early age that can see him progress forward. But as it's that time of the show, Matt, now I know that you were a little bit on the fence of who was going to be your one to watch. And I've given you 25 minutes to chew it over. So come on, hit us with it. Yeah, um, it, as I say, every single time on this show, it's it's getting hard now to pick someone that people don't know because we've talked about so many of these young players. But I'm actually going to go for for one that, that people probably will know, but I think it's it's kind of a big period for them. So I'm going to go for James Balagizi, who um, I think has, has got a lot of talent. I think he's he's one that probably people will have seen a few YouTube highlights of. They'll They'll kind of know the name. They'll know a little bit about him, but... I think it's it, it's a big period for him. He was talking about preseason. He was one who was was penciled in to go on senior preseason last season, but then injured his arm, couldn't go, ended up missing out, came back. It's it's not quite happened for for him since, and he's just not been able to to kind of kick on and, and get to that next level. I think it's it's fair to say. So he's a hugely talented player. He's someone that. I think has has got the ability to do what Jurgen Klopp wants from his midfield. I think he's he's very good on the ball. I think there's 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 certainly enough kind of raw material to to work with for him. But it, it's just a case of of whether he can kind of tie all of that together and 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 take that next step. So yeah, th that's that's kind of the reason I've I've picked him out. I think he'll definitely be involved. I, I would have thought in the the UEFA Youth League as long as there's there's no injuries or, or anything. So. I think that Juventus game is is a big one for for a good few players, but for him, I think is is a big opportunity to to kind of show what he can do. And you know, if he was set to go on senior preseason last season, there's probably a good chance he could be in a, a similar position this season. So, yeah, one to watch. I think over the next couple of of weeks or next couple of months, a couple of big games coming up for for Liverpool at, at that age group. So, yeah, a, a big opportunity really for for him to to. to just take it a game by the scruff of the neck, really. I think he's got the ability to do that. He can get hold of the ball. He can kind of hold people off and, and dribble and get Liverpool up the pitch in, in that yeah. way. So I just want to see a little bit more from him because we know he's got the talent. He just maybe hasn't quite kicked on yet. Well, maybe this Juventus game is the perfect stage for him. I mean, he sounds like he's got the qualities that get Liverpool fans excited, get them off their seats. So... All of you out there who are interested in seeing exactly how good James is, tune in next Tuesday for that UEFA Youth League game quarterfinal against Juventus. It's going to be a really, really fantastic game. I'm looking forward to it myself. Matt, as always, it's been a joy talking about all these young lads, seeing them grow. I'll see you again next time and all of you out there as well. <laughs>